There's no question Barbara Walters is a legend, and a legend in the interviewing field. She's interviewed them all, and we on certain occasions have sat at a table and challenged each other on, well, did you interview? Well, did you interview? Well, you interview? And always had a good time. She's a great interviewer, and she really has a way of getting into the soul of the interview, and usually the interviewee sitting there with tears as they relate some story they've never told before. She is a legend. Oftentimes, as an audience, we are cheated by what was said off camera or little things that go wrong or maybe right. Uh, give us a little insight on that interview with Mr. Reagan. Well, this was done a year ago at his uh, Thanksgiving. It was shown Thanksgiving I night. Saw it. And it was right. done on the ranch and called at home on the ranch, I think. As we were driving, the one thing that I remember about this, and it is a dreadful Jeep, and he hasn't gotten a new one. I hear he got a new tractor, but I think it's the same old Jeep. But we were going up, the, there's a great incline, in, not incline, does incline go up? Or hill. Hill. <laughs> <laughs> we people in news, we get very pompous. <laughs> in any event, we started to back up, and he started to put the car in reverse, the car, the Jeep in reverse, and it didn't exactly go in, and we began to go down a little bit, and I thought, this is, you know, you, this is going to be the most horrible thing. Because, and and I, this is why I was nervous about the driving. I think of it, and I, and I stumbled a little bit. And he then said he hadn't driven the, the Jeep in six months. That we don't put on the air. Oh. But what, when you see Reagan and the kind of ease that the president has in talking, because none of that was rehearsed, he is wonderful at small talk. He is almost too good at small talk. I went to a dinner a year or so ago when, when uh, Margaret Thatcher was here, the Prime Minister of Great Britain. And I was terribly excited because at the table that I was sitting at was the President, Prime Minister Thatcher, George Bush, and me. And the I four thought, of them. The three of them. And, and I thought, I'm going to hear the most inside. And I promise you, I know it sounds as if I made it up, but what the President talked about most of the evening with Mrs. Thatcher was the difference in jelly beans. They were these kinds, and they were very <laughs> <laughs> the past master. At Which, if something doesn't turn around in the economy, we'll all be eating them daily. Huh? I'm afraid so. Right. What are your feelings about, about him from a woman's standpoint? Is he a man of great strength? Is he, uh, he, may, he he's, is he sexy? No, I don't. <laughs> you know one of the reasons that he's not sexy, and it's a lovely reason, because that really is the nicest relationship between these two people. When we were doing the interview at the ranch, as we came in, it was very cold, and she took his hands and started to do this with his hands, and, and with such, not just warmth, but sweetness, there really is sort of nothing left over for anyone else. He doesn't flirt. He doesn't, uh, he, certainly he's an attractive man. You, we all see that. But he's not a sexy man. He wasn't in the films. I mean, he, I, I don't think that those were the roles he played. Right. So, Strangely enough, and I hate to get into this because then you get in trouble and you, you, know, you do a whole interview and you read that you said so-and-so was sexy or so-and-so wasn't. But Jimmy Carter, with both men and women, you know when you talk about truly charming people and right. you say they look at you as if they only have eyes for you and there's nobody else out there. You're getting that? Very Are you getting that? No, I'm not. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> We're trying. But I, I have often thought that Jimmy Carter was the best campaigner one-to-one, -one, the best communicator one-to-one -one, almost that I've ever seen because when he talks to you, male or female, it's as if you are the only one in the room. Well, do you remember the trouble he got into? He's lusting. <laughs> remember? I wasn't talking about his lusting. I was talking about his standing at a factory and saying, how do you do? Vote for me. Was he capable of small talk? He was very, he had a, you know, we, I think that we've gotten the impression over the years that perhaps he was, a, a lot of his honesty was maybe a little fake, you know, wearing the sweaters in front of the fireplace and so forth. I think that was very much in the, nat in the nature of the man. This is sort of a, forgive me for telling the story, but it has a point. Do you all remember a few years ago when he was very openly and honestly admitted that he was going to have an operation for hemorrhoids? Do you remember that? Right. Okay. Which is, you know, is... Many and we all pray that he wouldn't do what Lyndon Johnson did when he showed us the scar. Yes. Um, <laughs> yes, we did. Yes. I thought my story was going too far. Well, no, no. In any event, one, one Christmas, the Carters invited my daughter to the White House for Christmas. They didn't invite me, which was very thoughtful of them, because my child is around the same age as Amy's, and they knew that it would be very special 
for my little girl to spend Christmas with Amy. And by the way, my daughter thought that Amy was a terrific kid, and I have a terrific kid, and I figured that Amy must be far more regular than I think the impression was that we had received. Yeah. In any event, so we go to the White House, and there was a show beforehand, and Walter Cronkite was reading The Night Before Christmas. And we finished, and the kids go off, and the president at that time, Carter's president, comes over to us and starts to talk. And what is he talking to us about that night? His hemorrhoids. And I remember he walked away, and Walter and I looked at On Christmas at each Eve? Other. Well, it was three days before. Oh, oh, on the third day. On the third day. Hemorrhoids. Don't sing the. I'm going to be so sorry. Hemorrhoids on the tree. I had a point, and I'm going to make the point. Yes, go ahead. In spite of, in spite in spite of, your, of my troublemaking. <laughs> which was. He. He, the man was in some pain. It was very open. It was very honest. He wasn't trying to pretend. Uh, Walter and I looked at each other and said, well, you know, we both thought we had a big scoop for the news. How do you go in the news and talk about this? Yeah. But there, I don't know of many men, certainly many presidents, who, who would have been that honest. And I think this was a part of his character and not something that was put on or, or fake. It's hardly a small talk. It's not, I don't know, maybe jelly beans are better than... Hemorrhoids. Hemorrhoids. Now, but <laughs> now, Mr. Nixon was he capable of small talk? He tried. I, it, you know, it's. It, it, I was about to say it's quite touching, and then people, how can you say something's touching about Richard Nixon? But he, he, he. One of the one of the the, the things about Richard Nixon is that he simply couldn't communicate. When he tried to make small talk, it came out all wrong. I remember doing an interview with him, and he talked about the boots that I was wearing, and, 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 and why wasn't I wearing hot pants? Hot pants were the rage there. And it was, it was just all wrong. He, he, he meant well. He tried to get through. He simply isn't able to do that. I saw him a few weeks ago at a restaurant here in New York, and he, again, was trying so hard to be warm and nice, and was. And, it, and it's moving that he's trying so hard and can't do it. I'm sorry you're telling me that, because I'm doing an hour interview with him next week. <laughs> you know something? Or five minutes, as you the know, case may be. Um, I think that's marvelous, and, and very few people... Uh, you, you are really doing yes, it. Very few yes. people get to interview Richard Nixon. He's very careful about his interviews. We did one two years ago, which was live, and it was the first network interview that he had done, and I asked what I thought were very tough foreign policy questions. You know, why didn't you do this, and why didn't you do And he was terrific. At the end of it, I thought that I would give him some opportunity to get some empathy from the audience, and I said, Mr. President, how, how did you survive these years? I mean, what was it that got you through? Thinking, he would say, Mrs. Nixon, uh, the Lord, anything. That was the question he couldn't answer. 